we're talking all things delegation, how to get your business to run without you, whether or not that's even a goal of yours to have it run without you. What I guarantee is a goal is just to getting it to need you a little less. Welcome. If you're brand new here, my name is Stacey Tushel, and I help small business powerhouses get more customers through the door, more profit in their pocket, and more happiness in their homes with our signature method, well-oiled operations. And today we're going to be covering what it looks like to start to get that process of getting people on your team making decisions without you. So let's dive in if you're ready. We've got a slideshow I'm going to prepare. So if you're watching, listening to the podcast or listening somewhere, um, please know every single Thursday I go live in our free Facebook group, Foot Traffic Operations. All right. So let's talk about this. Most entrepreneurs treat their business as a baby that never grows up. That is what is happening all of the time, right? People say like, oh, it's my baby. I could not, or like a product, right? Oh, we've had that product forever. We become so attached to our business but the problem is, if you treat your business as a baby that never grows up, right, that's a problem. Babies get bigger. They become toddlers. They go to kindergarten, right, then middle school. And then one day, they should be ready to leave the nest, right? The one um, big problem I see is that owners are holding on to their business and not allowing them to grow up. You have to let your business grow up. You can't keep it a baby forever. So today I'm going to be teaching you how do you get there? How do you get the business to go to become a toddler, to go to kindergarten, to go to elementary, right? How do we get that baby, that business to not be a baby much longer, right? And it really is finding these four phases of delegation and letting go of control right? The goal at some point when you're parenting is to raise happy, healthy, responsible humans that can go off on their own, right? That's the same way we should be thinking about our business. Now, I have a uh, cheat sheet for a delegation cheat sheet. So comment delegate below where you're watching this or if you're listening on the podcast, make sure to DM us on Instagram, the word delegate. And I'm going to send you this over to really help you stay motivated to put systems in place and make it happen. Now, there is a lack of consistency in decision making, and team members are confused about how much responsibility they have, right? You are not at a level of trust where maybe they can make decisions on their own, but you don't have a system in place and you've asked, you haven't asked them to make a system or for you to make a system. So everybody just feels frustrated, okay? You might have a team. But without transferring that ownership, it's still needing you to run the show, right? And if you're getting balls to be like having balls drop, right? If you're having issues going on, it's a it's a frustration. But that frustration is a sign that you're missing a system or you're missing these levels of authority. Every business that I work with, they want growth. They want true growth where everybody, not just like that they want to scale, or at least that's what they say they do, right? But honestly, here's what you have to know. If you're not happy with the business right now, trust me, you do not want to scale. Scaling will magnify your problems, right? We've got to fix those problems now before we can scale. Next, what do we want? We want profit. We really need to talk more about profit. I don't see a lot of that conversation happening. And I'm talking about talking about profit with our team. We might finally share, maybe you do or do not share. I'd say most people probably don't share gross revenues, right? But the problem is they calculate the gross revenues. They figure out what the gross revenues are or they're completely off. They're thinking you make X amount of money, right? And that's not true. So profit is the one that actually matters. And I will, I am like proof of that because in the pre-pandemic, the studios were generating a certain amount of revenue. And since the pandemic, we are still about 20% under where we were, 20% under where we were. Okay. However, our profit has increased, not just the profit margin, but literally if I just calculated in dollars in profit. We are actually way more profitable today than we were two years ago. How is that possible? Well, when you run a business and you get a little comfortable and money isn't tight anymore, right? Because you're in that scaling phase. You start saying, yeah, that's fine. We can get that. Yeah, we need that software. Sure, we can do that. 
yeah, let's do that. That makes sense. Yeah, it's only $7 for that software. It's only $29. It's only $100, right? And then pretty soon we had all of these expenses that we didn't think were a big deal, but they added up. They added up, right? So the pandemic, man, wow, it, it knocked us into shape. I'm actually very grateful for that incredibly difficult time because it woke me up. I didn't realize how many things I was doing that was actually hurting my business, right? How many of you did it take for the pandemic to be that thing to kind of help you realize we've got to change some things, right? And then last, what people want, I think this is the number one thing most of my clients want. They want their life back. They want their time back. They want flexibility. And you definitely won't get this back and watch the business scale if you don't learn the skill of delegation. So let's get into it. What do those four phases of delegation look like? And a question I always get is, how fast can I do this, right? How long will this take me to get from one phase to another? Here's what I want you to understand. It all depends. It depends on what phase you are starting with this person. These four phases, we'll talk in a minute about who's in what stage, like what person on your team is on what stage, right? How open are they to learning this? Do they want the responsibility? Do they want the ownership? Another big one, how easily will you let go of control? All right. This usually isn't a problem with the team as much as it's a problem with the owner. Okay. So, here are the four phases of delegation. Get really, really clear on this. So many people skip this first one. The first one is follow my system exactly. All right. Now, a lot of people are like, wait, I have to have the system? Like I hired you to be the social media manager. Like you should know what you're doing, right? People get mad. They think I hired this person. Why, why don't they tell me what to do? They should know what to do. This is why I hired them, right? But you don't understand that so many people coming into your business brand new to them, they're looking for a system. They're looking, how do you do it here? What does this look like here, right? Unless you're going to pay a premium for them to come in and tell you what to do. But most people are paying on the lower end, expecting the higher tier person to come in. It doesn't make sense. How many of you have done that? Maybe a little guilty of it, right? If you're frustrated, it is because of a lack of a system. Okay. So I just had somebody who said, Oh, I'm so mad. Like I just went into my DMS and I saw what my customer service was doing. And they're like, not getting it. Like they're not selling at all. Like they're not trying to help the business, like make money. They're just kind of like answering and being done. And I was like, well, what's the system for answering DMS? And she was like, what? No, like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, well, you're mad at the way that they're doing it. What does the system say they should be doing? And she's like, well, there's not a system. I'm like, correct. So what you need to do is go, here's what I want you to say in the DM. Okay. From there, they're either following it or they're not. You can be frustrated when somebody isn't following the system, but you can't be frustrated when you haven't given them a system and you're wondering why they're not doing something you should be doing. Okay. Now at some point the system will be there and they will start to follow it. Okay. There's another phase of delegation where you could actually say to somebody, I want you to create the system and I'll approve, deny, or modify it. Okay. Now, many people start here. They hire somebody and think, well, you do it. But the problem again becomes, are they at a level where you trust them to do it? Or are they at a level equipped or skilled enough to make the system? Okay. When I ask somebody to do something for me, and I am the one holding the knowledge of how to do it nine times out of 10 and probably 10 times out of 10, I am never happy with the system they create because I'm the one holding that knowledge, right? So yes, it stinks sometimes that you may have to be the one to do the system, but once you do it, you don't ever have to do it again. You just have to record it once or write it down once. That's it. Okay. Now in my business right now, we are in foot traffic. I should say, cause I have more, more than one business. But in foot traffic, we are systematizing, like massively systematizing the business. And there are some things that don't have a system. Okay. I am not the one making all of the systems. In fact, the only systems I'm making are the systems for myself. Right. But if somebody in marketing does something, they're making the marketing system. Okay. So I don't want you to hear like create a system. And then you're thinking you have to do it. I just mean somebody who has the skill set and the knowledge needs to be the one making the system. A lot of time, that's not the girl that you hired for minimum wage, right? Like, hello, like 
like figure this out. This is not going to be the person that's going to be creating it for you, most likely, right? Okay. Next, next level is you allow them to make a decision based on your values and we'll discuss and finalize after. Okay. So I'm going to give an example of what this means. This means they have enough authority to make a decision in real time if there is no system involved, okay? And if, it, if there's a level of urgency to do that in real time, right? So for instance, let's say something happens in our business. And um, I'll use Sarah as an example who's, who's heavily like in our, our she runs our, our basically our operations, right? So Sarah in real time has the authority to make a decision based on our values without me, okay? Now, if it didn't need to be made for two weeks, I would have her come to me at our next meeting and say, hey, what, here's what I'm thinking, okay? But if somebody is irate, like let's say we have an irate customer and we messed up, like we messed up bad, okay? And I have calls all day. Like today's a great example. Today I'm on back-to-back -back media appearances. I have the podcast right now. I've got a couple people, other people's podcasts. I'll be presenting in, in um, somebody else's program. Like I am back-to-back. So no, no angry client wants to hear, we're on it. We'll get a response to you in seven hours, right? <laughs> like, nobody wants to hear that, okay? So if she had something that was urgent, that couldn't wait until today or tomorrow, right? She has the authority to make the decision based on our values and then come to me tomorrow and say, okay, so we had a situation yesterday. Here's what happened. Here's what I did, right? And we'll discuss and then finalize after is that the system we want to actually put in place as a system or do we want to modify it, right? Do we want to do something totally different, right? And this is where I used to go really wrong in, in my other business in the dance and music school. I would say you have authority to make the decision. We'll talk about it tomorrow. And I would be mad every time I would hear it not being done the way that I wanted it. You can't do that. You can't do that because what you're doing let me make this a little bigger for you. What you're doing is you're teaching them that they really don't have authority and we're not on the same page, right? And all of a sudden they start to think, why am I even doing this? Because she never listens to me anyway. And that is not how you get the team to be confident and make decisions without you. Okay. Phase four, this is what everybody wants, but they don't realize how many phases are in front of it. Number four is I trust you to make the best decision for the company and create a system. And I don't need to hear about it. I don't need to see it. I don't need to approve it. I trust that you've got this. Okay. This takes a while to get there. It takes a while and it doesn't just take a while because the person's inexperienced. No, the person just hasn't maybe been with you long enough to have experienced your company and what it looks like here, right? So when somebody's only been with you for three months or six months or a year, right? And somebody has been with you for five years, right? And they've had, they've been selling the same product. They've been working the same program, right? Like They've experienced a lot. Like when I think about my business that is 20 years old, there is very little that I have not gone through. Very, very little, right? I mean, I can tell you about the recession in 2008. I can tell you when Facebook first started coming out as a business platform that we could be using. Like I have been through it all, okay? In foot traffic, as we're now, I'm now I'm forgetting how old we are. We're in like this weird age. I think we're almost, I think we're six and a half years old is what I think we are. But anyway, I mean, foot traffic has never been through a recession, right? Like I'm not as experienced in this business with this product, right? With this specific client. My other business is a different client with a different product, with a different, right? So the idea here is, is the longer you do things, the longer you build relationships with certain team members, the more, the faster they're going to gain those numbers. They're going to be going from, hey, follow the system exactly to, you know what, why don't you create the system? Or you know what, I'm going to give you authority to start making these decisions on your own, but we're going to talk about it. And then number four of like, you got this. I trust you. I know you have the best, like the highest good of everybody involved that I'm okay with it. Like I know you can do this, right? But that will take time. When people want to back out of the business, they're just starting to get exhausted. They've been working 60-hour weeks forever. 
And they're like, you know, it'd be really nice to be working 30 or 20 or maybe just 40, right? Or they're getting ready for maternity leave. Or they're getting ready to become empty nesters and they no longer want to run that business, right? Or they just want to remove themselves from certain departments. What you have to understand is this is not an overnight thing. You have to start years, years before you want to remove yourself, right? This is so, so incredibly important. This is not something where it just happens. And when I teach people this, We'll have people come into well-oiled operations. And when they come in, it happens a little bit sometimes in the beginning. They're like, wait, I tried it. That didn't work. I'm like, wait, you tried to delegate? <laughs> Listen, you don't try to delegate. You delegate. You see what happens, right? And then we continue to work with that person and follow up. And pretty soon, delegation just becomes a new skill set that you have started to master. But in the beginning, you don't get to try delegation and say it doesn't work. You just have to realize that you haven't worked that skill set yet and you've got to practice mastering it and you will get better. I am way better at delegating today than I was 10 years ago. And I am probably nowhere near as good at delegating today as I will be 20 years from now, right? Because as I start to experience how people maybe reply or they need a follow-up or they need accountability or they need more confidence to make decisions, I start changing the way that I talk to them, right? So you will get stronger. Now, you deserve the time and financial freedom that delegation will allow you, but you need to be open to working this process and working on it from now on, not just for like 30 days, not just one time with one person until that didn't work out. And then you've said like, she's wrong. You just got to do everything all yourself. Because we all know like how that ends, right? So if you want to grab our delegation cheat sheet, comment the word delegate below so you can stay motivated to put those systems into place to make it happen, to start to remove yourself as the bottleneck in your business. I want to just, as I wrap up, I just want you to think about what it would feel like to go on a two-week vacation, to leave not being nervous, not thinking I've got to have my phone attached to me, to be gone for a whole two weeks and to have nobody text you, nobody call you, nobody having to email to find out what you would do in this situation. And when you got back from vacation, you didn't have all these emails to catch up on. You didn't have all these things like problem, like compl like, like uh, client complaints you had to call back and you didn't have any of that stuff, right? And you just got to get right back into the work and do the work you love. That is from delegation. That is from like allowing yourself to let go of control and let others help you. But it's about empowering others to make decisions, okay? We think no one can figure this out. Why am I so smart? Like, like and my sister and I, we always used to joke and be like, are we the only smart ones? Like, how is nobody figuring this out, right? That was us being so dumb, thinking we were the only ones that could figure it out, right? But as we started to delegate and as we started to empower people and equip them with the systems, it was like, oh, wow, they're magically smart. It's like, no, no, no. It's like putting somebody into like a quiz or a test at school, but not giving them the homework before to practice, right? We've got to equip them the homework before, the skills, the drills, right? All of that. And all of a sudden, as you start to do that, you're going to be like, wow, they're acing this, right? And it's because they finally got a good teacher, right? They finally got a good teacher, but we need you to get there. So if you're committed to stepping up, to becoming a better leader, to be putting systems into place, Stick with me this whole summer. We're actually um, right now inside of Well Oiled Mastery. So Well Oiled Operations is our foundational program, getting you the systems you need, all of the templates, everything you need to put your business into place to get the ball rolling. And we have students that continue with us after that program and what we call Well Oiled Mastery. And throughout Mastery, all summer long, we are systematizing. We are systematizing um, first in the month of June. We're sharing all of our fulfillment systems and wait till you see the workbook they are getting. I'm talking about like everything we do. It's like, here you go. Here's what we say. Here's what we do. Here's just like you can copy all of it. And then in the month of July, we're diving into all of our marketing systems, right? 
everybody always says like, oh my goodness, you put out so much content and you do this and you do that. If you would see the machine we had running behind and how little I actually have to do to put out that much content, that's the kind of stuff we're doing. So that's going to be in July. And then in August is all of our operation systems. So we're calling this summer school. Get in there. Come join us in mastery. Really start to dive into this. Now is the perfect time to do that. I think any time is a good time to put systems in place, but summer especially is a great time to start to systematize so that next summer you don't have to work as hard. You don't have to show up every single day to get your business generating money, right? All right. Grab that delegation cheat sheet, say delegate below in the comments, and we'll get that over to you. Have a phenomenal Memorial Day weekend. We are heading out. We are on our first RV trip of the summer, um, going away for the weekend. I'm so excited to be able to spend time with my family, not distracted by work, right? Really taking time to recoup, recharge, and come back next week, not to catch up, but to just jump right back in where I left off. So I want that for you as well. Have a phenomenal weekend and I will see you soon. Bye everyone.